Magic Maker is one of those games that it's hard to give a first impression on, or hell, to review that matter. Why? Because the enjoyment you get out of it, and in particular, how you decide to play the game, will really determine how much enjoyment you will get out of the game. This game won't hold your hand, it, won't, it will help you along the way, but by no means will it attempt to direct you where to go. You will make the experience that Magic Maker will give you, and thus it really becomes a problem. How do you give your impressions in a way to people knowing full well that the way you play may not be the way that they play? It's a difficult task, and hopefully I can shed a light on what I mean. The background of the game is this. You're a wizard who's looking for employment. Going to the wizard job placing agency, you get the job of security guard, which is misleading because I'm not exactly sure what kind of thing you're guarding. Basically, it's a setup to be a mercenary to do the types of tasks that the world's residents will ask from you. Retrieve an ancient wand out of a cave, investigate a haunted manor, there are a variety of things you'll be asked to do, and you'll do that by firing your wand and casting spells all over the place. The game's name is suited well for what the combat and platforming is based off of, your choice of materials. Each material brings some type of effect to add to the weapon or spell in question. Basic things such as elemental damage and knockback are here, but, but more to the point is the more miscellaneous kind of effects. You may be able to teleport using a spell, or have the spell go through walls, or even light up a room. You'll get two spell slots, a wand, an artifact, which is more of a helping ability, like the ability to jump high for example, or dealing more damage for every enemy killed, and a cloak in which to add the various elements to it. As you'll go along, you'll unlock more element slots in the spells and cloaks and wand slots. And that's where the game's key component lies. Mixing up the elements to do what you need to do is the main premise of the game, and it's how you decide to use it. And it does that well. When putting in the effort to shape your wands and spells, you can play a level how you want to, and in that retrospect, it works. The creator of the game most surely went for user control, as there's lots of customizations here, from how you fight, to how your projectiles look, to your character itself. They say there's over 2 million combinations, which is technically true, given the permutations of choices you have. Let's say, for example, I go to an ice level, where I have a bunch of ice blocks I have to get through in order to progress. Sure, I can go basic with a missile type spell to repeatedly knock a couple blocks out of the way, but it would take me a while. Or I can use my cape to summon ravens to attack the blocks for me as I focus on enemies. Or I can decide to use a fire laser to burn a precise path through the blocks. What this game gives you is options, and I love it for that. First several hours in the game, and I'm still playing around with combos, and in fact, I'm probably going to have to the way the game plays out. The mission types play a key part in this. I'm going to take one one key example from one of the missions. In this mission, I have to kill the fairy queen, but not kill any fairies, as the rightful queen wants to take her place at the throne. I have options here, but there's some better than others. Obviously, I can use those ravens I talked about before, but they attack everyone, including the fairies, so that's a bad option. Well, I can go with homing missiles, that might work, but if it decides to lock onto another fairy, uh, I'm screwed. No, no, I probably should go melee. That way I'm in control of the area of range to do damage in. You see, this is how you can use the elements to your advantage, and it makes you think. And I love games that make you stop and think about what you're doing. However, there's a counter to that, unfortunately. You see, the elements that you get do have grades, ranging from A to F, like a grading system. So you're going to get stronger elements, and while it may give you an incentive to use them, it really comes down to if you're willing to sacrifice possibly have more power or changing your playstyle to get that extra damage you need or some other element that you need. And that becomes key, because there's one big negative I have with this game, and it's its difficulty curve. Now don't get me wrong, difficult games aren't a problem for me. I like to play games that give me a challenge, but when I have issues is when the progression of that challenge becomes comes too steep at one time. Does anyone out there remember the meat circus level from Psychonauts? How the game all of a sudden shot up in terms of needed precision of jumps and seemingly out of nowhere? Well, Magic Maker seems to fall into this at first, and relatively early on. There are several levels that will become the backdrop for your adventures, an ice cave, a haunted mansion, and a forest to name a few. The first missions of each of these ones are relatively straightforward, and only a reasonable challenge, but then comes the next portion of it. All of a sudden you have a lot more monsters everywhere, a lot more hard-hitting monsters, and not a lot of places to run to. In short, expect to die. A lot. Now when you die, whatever you collected stays with you, so you may make more progress as you go along, or collect more. But I will say this, this game made me stand up and walk away from the computer. I felt that at the time I wasn't given the tools to succeed, and that I would have to start grinding to get to the next section. And while grinding can work for certain games and people, it felt a little bit out of place here. Now take that with a grain of salt, because later on, I had no problems with it. I did enjoy the grinding a bit. Challenge is what you make of it, and so many people enjoy this initial challenge, but it was enough for me to step away from the game that moment. And yet, I came back wanting to try it again. From what I see, you'll need the grind to try to get some of those better elements into your weaponry. Granted, this is a first impressions video, so I didn't spend too much time with the game given it just got released on Steam today. So I need to give it more time before I make an absolute decision on it. 
But that's not what you're here for, so I have to be open. The difficulty spike may be something that holds this game back. If you get easily frustrated with games, this may be somewhat of a problem for you. There's extra missions to mix up gameplay when exploring those maps, such as attempting to get through a randomized loadout or losing a material whenever you get hurt. It feels necessary to play as you'll need more powerful elements to deal with the challenges later on, and it is appreciated. It does mix up gameplay a little bit. The storytelling is a strange mix of good and bad for me. It's easy to not pay attention to the story and just play the game, which for some people can be a strength. The way I put my experience with this game story is this. You have to put an effort into wanting to follow along. It's mostly done through text, but one of the things missing here is interactivity. Think of games where you have to actually interact with an NPC to get them to talk. Here that's not the case. If you pass an NPC, they automatically talk. Most of the reasons for what you do are in the mission details. It is easy to miss on what you're exactly trying to do. And thus, you're going to need to pay attention if you want to get the story or what you're actually doing into perspective. Underlying controls seem alright, but there will be times where you swear you made a jump and you repeatedly don't. But be aware that the height of your character may not directly translate to the ability to fit into certain spaces, as you'll only be able to get into those spaces while crouching. Note that there are mechanics in terms of the weaponry and the spells that can help you easily move among the map, such as pushing you backwards or teleporting. So that does help in terms of the platforming element. Music in the game is well done, as each music piece fits the map and mission that you are undergoing. It was a nice background to all the game had, and did things relatively well in that retrospect. Sound design in terms of sound effects could have been slightly better in my opinion, but nothing feels out of place at least. The art direction is nice, as I stopped and took a look at what was going on to see what I was fighting. However, I wish things were bigger to notice the detail with. In one big in instance of that, the mini-map. Trying to navigate without being able to zoom in on the mini-map sucked, especially trying to find if I missed a room or two. There seems to be some performance issues at times. The game did crash for me a couple of times in my first experience, especially on one forest mission, but what was more concerning was the times when the game started to slow down significantly when playing, especially in the desert levels. There was a good two minute period where the game slowed to an absolute crawl, where the game was playing in one fourth of the speed. That happened two to three times during my initial playthroughs and a couple times afterward and can turn you off relatively quickly while you're playing. As I said in another video, I'm able to run the Crisis series and the new Wolfenstein with no problems, so I really don't think it's my rig here. You will also find that there's some strangeness that occurs. Enemies attempting to have seizures in the walls is my personal favorite. The game is easy and yet hard to recommend. It's got some well done parts, as the mixing of powers and abilities keeps the game fun and interesting. It doesn't seem to wear off on that. Generally fighting enemies is fun, and you'll enjoy the visual and sound elements of the game. But on the flip side, there are underlying performance issues and crashes, which hopefully will get patched. The difficulty spikes, which in my opinion will make you take a necessary breather, seems a bit over the top. You will seemingly need to grind for stronger equipment, as it does make a difference when fighting these tougher monsters. Let me put it this way. If you're a creative person and love the ability to completely shape your experience, and are a little patient, then this game is right up your alley. Other than that, it's a game I would recommend for other people to pick up at a Steam sale if that first point is not the case. The game still has reasonable strengths to give it a try. It reminds me of a 2D version of Magicka, but please note, if you have a lack of patience or want to be handheld through your gaming experience, this is probably not the game for you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have a chance, leave some feedback and comments below. If you liked the video, hit that like button. And if you want more content like this, hit that subscribe button. This is Dragnik signing off, hoping that gaming brings as much fun to you as it does for me.